We've talked about holiday variations of cocktails. We've talked about cocktails that I have made, but today we're gonna to take a step into the classic cocktail world and talk about something from way before any of our times on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. The Army and Navy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Mike, I'm a former bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we are going into the classic cocktail territory of what is most likely, in this case, a Prohibition-era cocktail called the Army and Navy. Uh, now, uh, I've got some notes here about the history of this thing, and what's really, really puzzling is uh, how useless they're going to be. As it would happen, a lot of cocktails and a lot of history in general gets lost to time. And I found that to be especially true in the history of mixology because you have to follow the tracks of who made what, when, with what, how did that change over the years, and if something changes enough, it's no longer the same thing, so everything has to be tied back to some kind of root. The Army and Navy is a gin sour variation that substitutes simple syrup for orgeau, or rather orgeau for simple syrup. And I could find very little concrete about it, but I think that's what makes it so interesting. The Army and Navy first appears in writing in the book, The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks by uh, David Enbury in, excuse me, Enbury in uh, 1948. And that's the first time it appears in writing, but it is not his cocktail, meaning that it is from at least before or the year of 1948. Which is what makes me think that this is a, uh, a sort of prohibition-era cocktail, because the evolution of drinks post, pre, and during prohibition would make sense it, during that time, it would make sense to find a gin sour with Orgeau in it. It first appears in writing in 1948. Uh, David Embury takes no claim to it. In fact, he has a, some rather stark words for it that we'll go into in a little bit here. No one knows who made it. As far as I can tell, I don't, I unfortunately don't have a copy of his book, but as far as I can tell, nobody knows the name or place of origin for this cocktail. As a matter of fact, nobody knows where the name Army and Navy comes from either because there's a couple different places it could have been. The first one that I saw was actually uh, a the argument that it's related to a traditional football game played between the Army and Navy academies. That might still be a thing. More likely though, the association is to the Army and Navy Club in Washington, D.C., which does actually still serve this cocktail on their menu on a regular basis. The problem is the Army and Navy Club doesn't take ownership of the drink either. They don't have any additional information that anyone has been able to glean. And still, we don't know who came up with the cocktail. So it could have been somebody in their staff, one of their bartenders, it could have been one of their chefs. It could have been somebody completely unrelated to any of this. And we simply have no way of knowing. So its history is really vague. Its name is really vague. And unfortunately, the spec is also super vague. So David Embury writes that the original spec for the drink is two parts gin, one part lemon juice, and one part orgeau. He describes that verbatim as horrible. Uh, he really despises that, that balancing, which doesn't make sense to me. He instead proposes a one, two, eight recipe where it's one part sweet, two parts sour, eight parts base. So let's think about what that would, what would you have to do to make that like a reasonably sized cocktail. That would be half an ounce of Orgeau, assuming, assuming you're using like half ounce for one part, half an ounce of Orgeau, one ounce of lemon juice, and four ounces of gin. Are you kidding me? That's all you're going to taste. At that point, just make a gin and tonic and shut the fuck up. Leave the rest of us to do the fun thing that we do. I don't know, I think Embury is bugging. Um, and unfortunately, everybody is kind of divided on how this drink should be built in the modern day as well. Liquor.com proposed uh, a recipe that was two parts gin, one part lemon juice, three quarter parts orgeau with a dash of Angostura. And I actually tried that um, when I was testing this drink and we'll talk about that later. They do that and then Moody Mixologist has something similar. They also have a version that includes Amaretto alongside orgeau to get like a extra blast of almond flavor. And then there's a distillery in Australia, of all places, that has their own variation on it called an Applewood Navy, which uses Navy Strength Gin and uh, Egg White, which it sounds really good. I just don't have any Navy Strength rum to try it with. So we've got a cocktail here that has history. All of it is completely and totally up in the air, though, which I think is kind of hilarious. But what really struck me about it is that it was, even though we know nothing about it, 
all of the nothing that we know is very consistent. Like normally when you're looking at history, you'll find different historians tell the story of what happens slightly differently. The order of events has changed, who said what has changed, what some person felt towards another has changed. There are at the very bare minimum, mild minute differences between different tellings of the story. That's not the case here. And that's what makes it really odd to me because I took one look at this and I'm like, this is a really consistent story where everybody mentions that it could be related to this football game. It could be related to the army and Navy. It could be related to this club, but none of us know. And that was the exact same thing that every single person had to say, which is just weird because you would think that somebody would say, oh, it was made by this person or this person, or they would at least claim that the army and Navy club owned the rights to it or came up with it, but nobody does that. And that's that's just super, super weird to me. And part of why I chose this drink as the first classic cocktail, because I thought it was super interesting. Just like the palette of the drink, very interesting. So that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and pull all of our stuff up to make this cocktail and get one into a glass. So we've got everything pulled up here now and ready to go. And before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what a gin sour is. A gin sour is just that. It's a gin uh, based cocktail with some kind of citrus juice, juice for sourness, balanced with sweetness, usually syrup. And the key thing that is different from a regular gin sour uh, and an army and navy is its citrus that it chooses and its form of sweetener. In this case, the sweetener uh, is substituted from simple syrup to orjo, which is an almond-based syrup, and the citrus component is now lemon instead of uh, lime. But really, both are equally as common when it comes to the overall existence of, what, of a, what a regular gin sour is, if there is such a thing. Orjo is a syrup uh, made from an almond base where you blanch almonds overnight, let them sit in water, strain that off, blend them with more water, squeeze it out, essentially make almond milk, and then turn that into a syrup by combining it with sugar and cooking it over a stove. Uh, I shortcut that by using almond milk from the store, unsweetened, unflavored almond milk, uh, two cups of sugar, uh, one cup of almond milk, and then uh, I usually use about a, a tablespoon and a half of almond extract to kind of beef it up a little bit. Doing it this way is perfectly serviceable. If you have the time to do the whole process, like over 24 hours, do that. It will most likely be significantly better. <laughs> uh, we also need some lemon juice and then some decent gin. I'm gonna use Bombay Sapphire today because it's the best gin uh, probably in the world. And I think a good gin for this. Um, maybe a little bit loud on its botanical volume, a little bit too wide of a, of a bouquet. Maybe something like Beef Eater would be better here, but I like this gin, so we're gonna go for it. We're gonna build this cocktail in the original spec that David Embury uh, said was horrible uh, because I am an agent of chaos and fuck this dude from the 40s. That original spec starts with one ounce of our Orgeo. Next up, we need an ounce of lemon juice. I actually have half a lemon here from when I was testing last night. This will be an ounce because the other half was also an ounce. So we'll just use that. And then finally, two ounces of our Bombay Sapphire Gin. There was a post somewhere, I think it might've been part of the Moody Mixology blog on this drink that suggested pulling back uh, on the botanical flavors by using a Plymouth or uh, another kind of gin, which is notoriously less sharp than London Dry Gin, which is what Bombay Sapphire and most other gins are. That could be advisable here, but I think the whole point of a gin sour is to embrace that juniper and botanical bouquet you're getting in the base spirit with ingredients that kind of play off of that in fun ways. This drink accomplishes that for sure. And I think skipping around that is kind, not necessarily a mistake per se, but not the best idea. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some ice in that, give it a shake and then serve it up in a coupe style glass. We're going to stick with our usual spec of two large ice cubes, one cracked, one whole. Go ahead and cap this up, slam it down and give it a shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill. I'm gonna take a coupe glass here and then double strain the cocktail through it to catch that lemon pulp you do not want floating on the top of the drink. So unfortunately, I'm in kind of a predicament because I don't have an original copy of the original recipe for this drink, but the one on liquor.com suggested that we garnish it with a grapefruit peel. It's February. I live in Michigan. There are no grapefruits to be had. However, I still can get lemons. So we're gonna go ahead and garnish this with a strip of lemon peel. And just like that, we're gonna express this over the top. And I'm gonna fold it and just put a nice little cut 
in the rim like so to put that on the rim of our glass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an army and navy in its original spec. Alrighty, now that we've cleaned our station up a bit, let's go ahead and give the cocktail a try. On the nose, ooh, wait, that's interesting. On the nose, you're definitely getting the impact of the almond in the orgeau, that almond scent and flavor, that, the sort of pastry almond, like almond paste, actually, which is divine. Um, but initially, I got this combination of uh, lemon citrus oils and gin botanicals with that almond impact that reminded me of like a very nice perfume I once smelled. And it was, it's, it's nice. It's interesting that it would smell that way because it's not embracing any kind of floral or musky elements, but it does read in that way, as you would describe like a traditional perfume. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. David Embury, I hope you roll in your grave when you hear me say this. You're an idiot, that's delicious. The whole thing is definitely sweet. I will say that it is on the sweeter end of what a sour can be, mostly because we're not using something like lime juice, which is very tart, very bracing, and we're putting it up against an equal measure of our sweetener, which in this case is a double sweetener, meaning two cups sugar to one part base. That being said though, it's not overly sweet or sickly sweet. It's, it's giving this sort of impression that it is equally balancing sour and sweet while being supported by gin botanicals. It's very, frankly, very simple. Kind of like every gin sour I've ever had in my entire life that is not this particular one. It kind of rolls across your tongue all at the same time. You get kind of at the very beginning, it goes gin, almond, lemon, but like gin, almond, lemon. Like they're, they're presenting at about the same time, they kind of roll into each other very quickly, but there's not a ton of evolution in terms of what we're tasting here. It's three parts in a sour format. It's not typically going to have that kind of evolution. That being said though, it is really good and divinely smooth. Or Orgeau has the benefit of, because it's made with almonds, containing a significant amount of natural fats, which give it a sort of creamy essence to it. Um, it's the reason why a lot of Mai Tais are like kind of creamy when you would almost think of them as like a variation on a daiquiri and, or like a daisy in a really weird way. It's delicious. It's, it's really good. And I will say three quarters of an ounce of Orgeau might be enough. I do like this a lot though. Um, if I were to go out to like a bar someplace and they gave me this, I would be definitely happy with it. Would I say the same thing for Embury spec? Oh God, no, God, no, are you kidding me? I, I think if you were to keep the sour and sweetness balanced, so both still a one ounce measure, but still took the gin up to four ounces, maybe it would work. But cutting back the sweetness and just blasting these flavors with botanicals is gonna make that orgeau disappear. And maybe not disappear completely, you might still get it on the mouthfeel, you might still get it in the flavor, but you're not going to get it the way you're here, which is like really in your face. And that's great because that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a prominent variation on a gin sour with a simple substitution. And that's what this is. So the one, two, eight spec, not a fan of it. Uh, what about the other ones though? Well, like I said, I did start off uh, my experiments with this by trying the liquor.com recipe, which cuts back the Orgeau to three quarters of an ounce, but also adds a dash of Angostura bitters. I thought it was too much. I found that three quarters of an ounce of Orgeau with this two ounces of gin, the lemon juice and the Ango, it was interesting, but there was something about the balance to it that I, I don't think worked. I think the Ango kind of wipes a, away a lot of the subtle kind of light flavor that is almond. And because it's already pulled back from one ounce uh, in its full measure, you're kind of losing it alongside the gin botanicals and the lemon. And the thing is, most of what I got in that version was gin. I, for whatever reason, I didn't get a ton of lemon. I didn't get a ton of Rojo. I got Angostura spice and gin botanical, like juniper and like pine, things like that. It was still good, but it, it wasn't balanced. It wasn't a rebalancing. It was a different version that I think needed work. All in all, this is a really good cocktail. 
And to say that this spec is horrible, I think is really misguided and kind of ignorant. Almost elitist in a way, actually, because th that, that specific spec Embury gives, the 128, immediately reminded me of the historical time of the gin craze in London, where people are drinking slugs of gin from lead pipes and alleyways for five pence in the copper or whatever. And, I, and I, literally all I thought in my head after trying trying the rebalance spec was, yeah, Embury is wrong. It doesn't need to be extra proofy. He's just an alcoholic who doesn't like tonic water. Embury describing this as horrible is frankly an insult. Um, and I'm still gonna buy a copy of his book because I wanna know what else is in it. But um, yeah, he's just wrong. I hate to say it, he's just wrong. So yeah, definitely stick with the original spec. Uh, especially if you're into sweeter sours, and then just cut back the Orgeau to three quarters of an ounce uh, if you prefer a more tart, semi-sweet sour. That, ladies and gentlemen, has been the Army and Navy, our first classic cocktail to be covered in Mike's Hard Reviews. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch the next episode. I'm gonna try to make this a weekly thing. So far, two weeks in a row, same time, same day. Maybe we'll be able to stick with that, who knows? Until we know for sure, click the bell and then you'll know when they come up because I do kind of want to make extra videos to go like in random places just for fun's sake. Um, I have a podcast idea and everything planned, not planned, but like ex wanting to do as well. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Be sure to share this with your friends if you guys enjoyed it. And if you want to try this at home, please do and let me know what you think. And if you have the balls to try the one, one to eight ratio, try it and let me know what you think, because if there's any merit to it from your opinions at home, I think I'm gonna have to try it and see if Embury is going to prove me wrong. All that said though, thanks for watching. Please drink responsibly and have a great day. Bye-bye now.